Okay, in today's session, we'll talk a little bit about um, scanning and vectorizing, uh, in particular signatures and sentiments. Um, we frequently have inquiries from um, trophy and award shops, gift shops, or jewelers about how can they scan and vectorize a signature or a sentiment or something on a card that maybe a customer has provided to them that they'd like to put on a, um, a locket or something of that nature. So this functionality uh, does require at least the discovery max level of Gravistyle or the graphic level of Gravistyle. So let's start by going to the selection mode and importing in an image. So I'm gonna bring in this bitmap, could be a JPEG, GIF, or TIFF, and uh, I'm gonna zoom out so that I can see this. So what I basically have is on a piece of paper, I've taken a Sharpie, written a sentiment, and then taken an ink pen, a ballpoint pen, and written the sentiment. And then to bring that into Gravistyle, I took a photograph of it with my cell phone and imported it in. So this is a very common practice, uh, very easy to accomplish. You could also scan using a flatbed scanner that image in, but you want to scan it in at a high resolution, maybe 400, 600 DPI. Uh, the higher the resolution, the greater the results you will have. Um, also, if you're trying to capture something from a computer screen, for instance, on a website, then that capture is going to be a very low DPI. Typically, what we see on websites is about 72 DPI, and when you try and trace it, it's going to be very grainy, so it's going to be difficult and require a lot of cleanup to get something that's truly usable. So, in this case, um, I do have pretty good contrast between my paper color and the color of my ink, but I want to try and get the background a little wider so that I have an even sharper trace. To do that, I'm going to go to Professional Tools and go to Bitmap Editor with my uh, image selected so that it's highlighted, and that will take me into the Bitmap Editing screen. So I can see um, what was my scanned image here. Uh, if I slide the separator bar over, then I get a cleaner view of it. So I have many tools in here that would allow me to go in and paint over some areas or do some cleanup to some areas if I needed to. But rather than doing all that today, we're just going to take kind of a shortcut and I'm going to go straight to uh, my color corrections uh, on this tool over here. So with this, I'm going to try and brighten and add contrast. So the first thing I'm going to do is brighten this up a little bit. And what I'm trying to accomplish here, and hit preview, is to get rid of some of that colored background. So I've been pretty good at doing that. I've still got a little graininess down here, but that should be okay. Um, if I wanted to try and get rid of a little more, then I can come over and do that again, and it'll clean it up a bit more. But keeping in mind there's a balance, because the further you go, the more you will start to lose your original signature, your black ink. Uh, now, to try and pull the black ink back forward, I'm going to go to Contrast and bump that up and hit Preview. And I may want to do this two or three times so that I'm pulling uh, basically the darker colors back to be more prominent. So when I'm happy with that image, I'm going to hit OK. And then the next thing, then I can see my results out here. So if it doesn't look good here, I can go back in and work with it some more. Uh, the next step is going to be to go File and to save and quit. By saving and quitting, it will take the changes that I've made in the bitmap editor back out into the bitmap that's on my desktop, okay? Uh, if I hadn't clicked save and exit, then this would still have that grayish color. So um, now I have basically an image that's ready to be vectorized, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the vectorization step. These are different slides that allow me to control how closely the trace follows the original lines and how much it tries to compensate for any uh, angled areas, et cetera, in the image. So uh, I can take a image that's a little pixelated and smooth it out a little bit by using these settings. Okay. Then down here is a spot filter. This just allows me to tell it um, which spots to ignore. So if there are little specs from the scanner bed or maybe paper fibers, then this will allow me to have the, um, the software automatically take those out based on the size that I gave it here. So uh, this icon allows me to have it do an outline trace versus a centerline trace. 
Okay, in this case, I'm gonna do an outline and click OK. So it's gonna take it a few seconds. It's gonna go out and look at how many different colors there are in this image. And then it's gonna come back and display that for me. In this case, because I did the background removal, it just gave me two colors, black and white. Uh, it, let's say it had come back with three different colors. If it came back with black, gray, and white, then I might want to select the black, hold control, select the gray, and then fuse those together so that the black and the gray both became black, which would give me a cleaner trace. In this case, I only have black and white, so I'm gonna select the black, and tell it, okay, go ahead and trace that. If I didn't select the black, it would trace both and give me basically two image on, images on top of each other, and the white background image would have a, a line around it or a box around it. So now it's run the trace and come back with the results of that trace. So um, I'm gonna drag that over to the side. So I'm at this point, pretty happy with this. It's done a pretty good job of tracing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my original image. And then I'm gonna take this and shrink it down a bit. Okay. And center it back over my workpiece and zoom in by right clicking a couple of times. So uh, now that I have the trace, I've got two different versions. I can decide which of these I want to keep uh, and start to do some cleanup. So if I look up here, then there are some pretty jagged areas. There are some uh, specks and dots that were captured. Um, so in this case, this may not be the best trace I'd want to use. Given the choice of the two, I'd use this one down here. But because um, life happens and we may need to clean up some of these things, we'll go through a few of the things that you can do to quickly clean up an image like this. So the first thing I want to do is ungroup it so that I'm able to select individual elements rather than getting the entire uh, trace. And then I can start to clean that up. So there is a um, point edit mode that's available that will reveal the Bezier curves to you and control points. So here I can start to uh, clean it up pretty quickly. I don't wanna take a lot of the sketchiness out of this, if you will, because after all, it was a, a signature and I do want it to still look like a signature in the end. But there are some things that I certainly should clean up in it. Like down here, I've got a little anomaly that's in it or a little loop. Uh, so if I select my tools, grab this one then I can come in and clean up this entire area over here and straighten it up in one quick little click so it gives you the opportunity to go in and do cleanup um, if I go back to selection mode then little anomalies like this I might want to just select and delete so things like that that shouldn't be there at all that came in and sometimes that will paper fuzz would fall under that category, you can very quickly get rid of just by selecting and deleting it. So when you make your selection, anything that's a complete contour that falls within your selection, um, you can easily get rid of. Anything that's not a complete closed contour, the software will ignore. So for instance, if I come and select this um, O, then it's just gonna capture the inner circle because the complete outer circle wasn't in the selection, whereas this time the box is around both, so it grabs both. Okay, so a little tip there to help you with the cleanup. So um, this might be one that I'd wanna do a little quick cleanup on. So here, let's go from maybe here to here, All right? Um, in doing your cleanup, one of the areas that you want to avoid is the double box. So if I needed to clean up this area down here near the double box, this is a start and end point for my, um, for my cutter coming down. So if I needed to clean this area up, then I need to just find another box somewhere that's in a clear area and hit this start point. And it will relocate the double box up there. And now I can come in and clean up this area and not have to be concerned with it. Okay, uh, where the issue comes in, if that, that box is in the area that you're cleaning up and you use your cleanup tool and you go to either side of it, then you can cut away the rest of the image and lose the rest of that letter. So that's why you wanna move it to get it into an area that's out of your way, okay? So um, let's go back to selection. 
So in this case, I'm not going to use this up here. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. I'm going to come down and select my, um, my sentiment down here and shrink that down and place it near my material definition. And I basically have a material definition here that's one by two inches that would be kind of representative of the size that a charm or a pendant might be. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup and get rid of any little specks that are in this image. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, all right, so the next thing I'll do is go ahead and group that back together by selecting all of it and group. And then I might want to tell the engraver rather than to just engrave this as an outline, to go ahead and fill it. So I'm gonna give it a different tool path color. Uh, go to properties and tell it that I want to do 2D on bottom. Give it a depth of engraving. And in this case, I'm gonna say about three thousandths because I'm gonna use a diamond cutter. Uh, I'll come down and select my diamond drag. So we'll just say this is a piece of jewelry. And then here I'm able to select whether that gets a contour fill, sometimes called island fill, or if it gets a hash fill so that it just follows uh, straight line fills. In this case, I want it to follow the shape of the contour, so I'll select the contour fill and hit apply, okay. So now we'll notice that this has changed color. It's no longer black text, it's turned to blue because I assigned it the tool value that was assigned to the blue tool path. So now if I go in and look at uh, my engraving page and do a preview, then if I've done everything correctly, I should be able to see the filled text here and see what the toolpath will be to engrave this. So sure enough, it's not engraving as an outline any longer. It is now uh, filled text. And if I really zoom in on that, I can see where the toolpath has followed the contour of those letters to do the fill. So hope you found this beneficial. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next tips and tricks session.